What's going on guys? Coach Madden, YougoProBaseball.com here with Fernando Cortez in his facility here in Temecula, California. If you guys are in the SoCal area, come check him out. But we're going to talk about some fielding drills in this video. Fernando was a major league infielder, middle infielder, plays some third base as well. Yeah, mostly um, short second, some third. So he's got some great tips for you when it comes to infielding. We're going to talk a little bit about angles, but at first, show us some infield drills that you did to really get you to play at the major league level. So one of the, um, I mean, it's a super basic concept of getting down on your knees. I just don't think a lot of people talk about why they're on their knees. A lot of times, yeah, I'm here, I'm not moving, and I want to put my glove out. Let me back up a little bit so you can see the glove versus the white on the crown. But a lot of times when you're putting your glove out and you're on your knees, what I'm trying to accomplish is staying low. There's a lot of young infielders that will actually come up out of their stance, so if I'm here and they're fielding ground balls like this, right? So they're not actually getting lower, sitting and getting low, but if I'm on my knees, I'm over-exaggerating over again, once again, what it's like to actually read the hop, get low and see it. So if I can get a ball that's out front, right? I'm looking at it at a much different level than being up here. Now the main goal, obviously, is to field the ball. But if you can't see the hop and you can't see what that ball is doing, it's going to be real tough to actually field the ball consistently. You might get lucky here and there, or you might just, you know, boot some balls that you shouldn't be booting. But the reality is when I get low, I'm just down here. I want to read the hop and I'm getting out front. If I'm in here and I'm catching a ball deep, then I can't actually feel this more clean and smooth. It's going to be hard for me in here to get to my transition. I want to be able to get out here, get it, bring it in and then I'm ready to throw the ball wherever I'm actually throwing. So you can get on your knees, get real low, get out front, read the hop, and that's just the ball straight at you. Obviously you can do the same thing, work the back end, you can get here, and I can actually set a little bit even sideways, and I can go ahead and read the hop on my forehand. But for the most part, when I'm down here, I'm just actually trying to read the hop. I'm training myself to stay really, really low because when you come out of your stance and you start to get taller, bad habits happen. So just the over-exaggerating, getting in good positions, super basic, super basic. I'm talking like this is elementary basic, but don't get it twisted. There's guys in the big leagues that are doing this type of stuff. See, a lot of times too, like I get flashy because the more flashy you get, the more confident you get, right? It's not showing off. Like you got to be able to gear it the right way. Some people will be, oh, this and that. Sometimes I want to field it with one hand and not like two because a lot of times if I'm fielding with one, I actually get more distance. If I'm trying to field the ball that's outside of me with two hands, I can get here further. You know what I mean? So you got to pimp stuff sometimes. And you, f I feel like you feel looser when you have that swag and that, and there's no like, you're not playing like um, small. You're like yeah. letting your, you're letting your, your, your full abilities out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like that ground ball you were talking about where I made it and I threw it. Like, I'm used to doing that. I'm used to coming up and there are, people are like, oh, you made that look easy. I'm like, it's a tough play, but I got to go dictate how that hop's going to be. So if I'm scared of the hop, I'm running at a ball, like with some insecurities versus I'm running at the ball, like how I want to go get it, how I want to field it and how I want to throw it. You know what I'm saying? Like, look how Machado is, right? Right. That dude's like, and Tatis Jr. and all these guys, Nolan, Chapman, these guys are fielding balls the way they want to field the ball. Right. If you ever let the ball dictate you as the infielder, you're done. Right. You got to dictate the hop. Right. You got to dictate how you want to get it, you know? Like 100% conviction. You have to have 100% oh, yeah. conviction in your, and if you have the slightest fear in, behind it, like maybe even, maybe even if that thought for that play that you were making, that thought came in like, oh, Imagine what my coaches or teammates are going to say when, if I did this. If I missed If you this. had that thought, yeah, you're done. You probably don't make that play. Well, and not only that, once you have that thought, you then creep into, I don't want the ball. Right. And then all of a sudden, guess what happens? You get that ball. <laughs> and, and you can't run from it. You know what I mean? When you run away from it, it comes at you. So the other times, like, it's, here's a little mental thing I've done before where I was feeling real confident. I always want the ball. I want the ball. I want the ball. But then there's times I didn't want the ball. And I'm like, ooh, like I kind of don't feel like I want the ball. And then I go, no, I want the ball because I, I played it. I was like, if I get the ball, if I want it, want it, want it, it won't come to me. Right, you know what right. I mean? So I reverse psychology, like my body and how I'm actually going to get ready 
to feel the ball. And then, and if it did come, I already just faked it, and I'm and I'm cool, and I got it, and I can take my deep breath after I make the play. It's weird, somebody who could be so good at something at a high level, get insecure at times. Right. It's this constant battle that you're battling yourself. That's great. You know what I mean? So well, another this, thing we could do too. Okay. Um, so like for me, middle infield guy. I'll get on my knees and like just throw some at me right here. Okay. So I like to work my, how I want to get the ball and stay inside here versus like coming out here. Cause if I go come out here and I catch it, I got to now bring the ball in to go throw. I want to be in here in this little circle. And most of the time, like if I'm standing up, I'm moving my feet, I got to center this ball. So if you make a bad throw, yeah, because I'm on my knees here, I got to do it this way. But the reality is if I was standing up, I would move my feet so I could get centered and then go. So a lot of times I'll do this same thing where I'm just kind of like in here, you know, and just working hands. working hands. You know, some people are super close. Some people will even put it down and then go get it, right? Because the reality is like, I'm not gonna get a perfect throw every single time. It might be here. The guy might've thrown it way too quick before I can get to the bag. So I can't move my feet to get there. I have to get it here and catch it awkwardly. So I'm gonna catch it awkwardly so that I can figure out how to go from here and actually do it. It's not how I wanna do it every time, but I gotta be able to adjust, especially if someone's bearing down on you. You know what I mean? And then it just makes it easier because when you are on your feet, you get to use your feet to make it a better throw, but then you still are practicing when you don't get that good. So you, you see the constant theme of every drill that I've talked about today? Uh -huh. How I'm trying to put people in a very uncomfortable situation. That way when the normal every day play and situation comes, it's that much easier. If you're working on the hardest stuff ever, the most uncomfortable thing, you're working uncomfort so that you could be comfortable. Right. If everything in this world was just comfortable and easy, like you're not gonna understand how to, how to have adversity, how to pick yourself up when you fail or when you're in an awkward situation, how do you flip that and turn it into something that you know, can be doable? And that's just another reason when you got that first major league ground ball hit to you that it looked so easy and it looked, looked so natural like you had been playing in the big leagues for 20 years and nothing was, and you had that swag when you got done with it. It's just like, you've been in so many uncomfortable situations before that, that even though if you were nervous inside, it didn't look like it because you had done that a thousand, a million times maybe. Yeah. Same thing. And on this too, what I'll do is, I'll even have, like just toss it underhand on this ones. I'll even go like no glove, right? Where I'm sitting here, you know what I mean? So the goal is obviously transition, get it here to here, but as you're getting it here, you gotta feel this ball, what it's like to actually get on that four seam so you can make a good throw because if any little bit off, you might get that little run, that little tail, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times I'll do this too, where I'm just trying to get there. And same thing with hitting, go ahead. If you get two out front here on your turn, look where my body is, I'm leaning forward towards first base, I'm not behind my, my, my throw. Same thing if when you're not behind your hitting or same thing when you're pitching, you're not behind it and then you go. So it's the same concept, gathering, you're gathering to go versus going, now I have nothing on my throw. You know what I'm saying? I wanna be behind everything. So I'm behind this ball, behind this ball. You know, see how I'm square to everything? Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is like with my logo right here, there's a line here. So it's helping me know in my head when I go how to get back on this line from second base to first base. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're on a field, you're in the dirt and you're, you know, obviously second base can help line up with first base. But if you want, draw a little line because all you're doing is you're trying to teach your shoulders how to get in a position to throw in a straight line. Sometimes you're going to be all over the place because where the ball takes you. But even then, if I come up here on a ball, over here and first base is behind me, I gotta gather myself and point my shoulder back to where I'm throwing anyway. So you're training yourself always to just be in a situation where you can square up and make a good solid throw where the ball's gonna go everywhere. And so you're doing this stuff on a daily basis. This is like your go-to kind of getting warm routine in field yeah. drills. Um, so for me on like if I'm in game, when we're talking pro ball, right? So I'm playing Monday through Sunday. I have a routine to where I might do that for early work and work on my angles for early work. During batting practice, I'm taking, you know, in, if this is the infield grass, I'm infield in on stuff. 
then I'm halfway. So I'm working halfway, double play depth, and then I'm working deep, right? Sometimes I'll flip it to where I start deep, I come halfway, and then I go infield in against live hitters. So guys that are smoking balls, and I'm here, and I'm just trying to get to everything I possibly can get to. Even balls that are like pop-ups, I'm in and out of my break, I'm going, I'm running after it. I'm training myself to always go after every single ball. I remember you telling me, you had like outfielders telling me, telling you, like, dude, what are you doing way out? Like, yeah. you'd be way out in right field chasing balls from second base. From second like, base. Like, just flying all over the field. I'm fine. Like, that's how I am. Like, the ball's in the air. It's mine until you tell me it's not. Because, to be honest with you, I don't trust people. I don't trust. And, I, and, I've, and luckily, I've been in those places sometimes to catch those balls because outfielders didn't get to them. Mm -hmm. So my job as an infielder is it's priority, right? If I'm the shortstop, I got priority over the second baseman and the third baseman, right? If I'm the second baseman, I got priority over the first baseman. Now, as an infielder, I'm going after every single ball until an outfielder who has priority over me calls me off. But if you don't call me off, it's my ball. What so, about, you also told me about an infield drill that you used to do during batting practice where you had the pitchers or teammates yeah. just try to hit the balls, Pat, tell that story. So these guys, my number one goal is to never let a ball go by me. Whether it was BP, practice, early work, game, my goal was there was no ball, depending upon what position I was playing, short, second, third, that was gonna get by me. So it got into this thing where it was a game where all the pitchers who actually hit fungos to the infielders would basically challenge me and they would try to hit balls by me. So, and I'm talking like 115 degree heat in Montgomery, Alabama in August, and I'm just sitting there before games and I'm not letting the ball go by me. What it was doing for me though, it was actually putting me in positions to get the balls that I shouldn't be getting to. That way when games come, I'm getting the balls that I shouldn't be getting to because I've already practiced it. I'm already going out of my comfort zone, going behind the bag, getting the ball, jumping, making a play that people think is crazy. But the reality is I've been practicing it every single day. So I made it a game to where one day I'd have one pitcher just hit fungos at me all day and he would try to get me, try to get me, wouldn't get me. Then the next guy would come and I would just play them all. And a lot of guys would hit line drives up the middle and say they got me, but that wasn't true. <laughs> Josh Parker, you know who you are. <laughs> Talk about your glove, um, not this glove, but your uh, personal glove, because we're talking about training small with a smaller object, and you were sh you showed me your glove, yep. and you said it was you always used a lot smaller glove. So talk about your glove, what you how how'd you like to form it, and and what size was it, and things like yeah. that. Yeah, I I used personally an 11 inch um, glove. I like the smaller glove for me because I like to be able to control my hands. Um, I like to be able to feel the ball in my hands, not just in a glove. And a glove's doing the work. It also helped me with my range, believe it or not. Because a lot of times when I have a longer glove, I basically can kind of get lazy. And instead of getting to the ball with my feet, which I think moving your feet and getting in a position to field the ball is the number one thing you need to do as an infielder. But if I'm not using my feet because I'm getting lazy because I know my glove's a little longer, then I'm just gonna let stuff like that slide sometimes. So what I did was I had a smaller glove. I always made sure I was moving my feet, got in front of the ball, and then I was able to feel the ball, feel it in a, in a glove like this that was pretty small. Now this is obviously the train glove, the valley glove, which is awesome. This is something that I would use like in practice, BP, before games, use a sh short glove. Now my glove, which is smaller too, it's a little bit bigger than this, but still when I get to this, it's gonna little, be a little bit easier. And this one's beat, look at how old she is right here. But the fact of the matter is if I can get myself in a position to field the ball by moving my feet, it's forcing myself because I have a smaller glove. I think a lot of people get lazy when they got a longer glove. That's just my opinion. Now, were you, did you like, I know some guys like to flare it out or anything. Like how did you, did you what did you do to break it in and mold it the way you like it? Honestly, there was a few different things that I would do. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do, but some gloves I just threw in the microwave for a minute, throw it in there for a minute, and then let the leather just kind of get real soft, and then put a glove in it, and then just start playing catch with it. Um, a lot of times I would just start playing catch with it. Um, or depending on the, on the make, the model, and the actual leather, I've sat it under a couch to where the, you know, the guys are playing cards on. I actually just put it, slid it right under there, just so I can start breaking in that, you know, the leather. Uh, but for the most part, I just started immediately grabbing it, forming it how I wanted it, and just playing catch, playing catch, playing catch. Or, because sometimes you pitchers are really, really good at doing other things <laughs> than pitching, 
BP, shagging, killing the spread, right? <laughs> I had guys that actually could really break in gloves good. And I had a go-to guy who, Josh Parker was one of them, I would literally, I'd get a brand new glove and I'd throw it to him and I'd say, go break it in. And he would break it in how you knew I liked it. And then he would just start getting it going by taking, uh, you know, shagging and playing catch. And then for about like a week or something, I'd go grab it back from him and it'd already be loose for me. That's awesome. So, so now let me ask you this. Were you a guy who I, I noticed in your office here, you, you only have two gloves in here. Were you a guy who stuck with a glove for a long time or were you a guy who like every season needed a new glove? I would need a new glove if it got to the point where my glove was like too floppy. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I still needed a little bit to be stiff just a tad because it helped me, you know, secure the ball. A lot of times when it got real floppy, ball would kind of start to come out a little bit, even on like backhands or something. So what I would do is I would just recycle, get the same model, same glove, same everything. That's why you see these two gloves are the same. And then when they actually discontinued this, I was super sad because it was like my favorite glove. Um, but yeah, so like once it got too floppy, I'd have to go and, and bring another one in. And I always had a backup ready though. So I had one that like was pretty much almost broken in just in case something happened, like if I forgot it or I lost it or you know what I mean? Right. Like it broke, which actually, Something like that happened to me one time. I was playing catch um, during BP and the ball went through the web and hit me in the face. Dang. So like right off the bat, like I had to go get the other one, use it while the other one was getting tied back up. So um, d there was another story that you told me about a play. I'm not sure if it got stuck in your oh, glove. The, the, those plays. <laughs> or there was one where you were coming one hand and you took the glove off. Tell that story. That was a great so, story. All right. So that play was a funny play. So basically, Playing second base, obviously I'm right-handed. And a lot of times when you got fast guys that lead off the game, one, two hitters, I typically come up and play and take away that bunt, especially if there's a left-handed pitcher because a lot of those guys will try to take that bunt with them and pass the lefty. So the only person that can actually go field the ball is either the second baseman or the first baseman. Most of the time the first baseman gets it, I'm gonna get beat by the fast runner to first. So really it's my play to go get it. So a lot of times I play real shallow and I take away you know, the bunt. If I'm playing too deep, I'm not gonna get to it. So there's a few different times, and I've probably done this play like four or five times, but the first time I ever did it, um, it was against uh, Dwayne Bacon, who's this fast center fielder um, in the Cubs organization. So I'm taking away the bunt. Sam Walton's a left-handed pitcher, he's on the mound. He goes over there, he pitches, lefty. Bacon does not bunt, he swings. Smokes a line drive right off of the pitcher up the middle, I'm running up the middle, my first move's up the middle, because it's going up the middle, it ricochets off Sam Walton's shoulder and goes back between first and second, so I gotta turn around. The only way I can make this play is if I either grab the ball with my glove, get it, and try to throw across my body, which is not gonna work because Dwayne was way too fast. If I get it, spin and throw, then I get him, probably not because Dwayne's too fast, so the only option, it just kind of came out, was I was running and I decided to take my glove off and as I'm running, pick up the ball, throw the guy out left-handed. And I did. And there was the only, literally, I wasn't showing off. I knew I could do it because I've been practicing it a bunch. Story is, I actually can throw it with both hands. People didn't know it. I grabbed that ball deep between first and second, almost on the grass, throw him out and literally the stadium just stops. And everyone's like, what just happened? <laughs> me, I know what happened, so I felt kind of embarrassed, which is weird because it was an awesome play. But I throw my face in my glove, and I'm just kind of like, okay, I wasn't showing off. I promise I wasn't showing off. But it was literally, it was the only play that I could do. And it was instinctive. And it was instinctive. So the cool thing was I had my left fielder came in. Jace Brewery runs in. He's like, dude, that's a, oh my gosh, that's the greatest play I've ever seen in my life. And everyone's freaking out. And I thought I was going to get in trouble because of, like, I was showing off. But literally, it was the only play I had. I had one of my old uh, coaches who was Mako Oliveras from Puerto Rico. He comes he, up, you know he Mako? Manner, yeah, double so, A. Double A. So Mako comes up to me, he goes, he looks at me, he goes, I've been around baseball for 50 years. It's the greatest play I've ever seen in my life. Wow. And he doesn't sugarcoat anything. Yeah, he doesn't Mako sugarcoat doesn't. anything. <laughs> and I was like, really? And he goes, yeah. I said, okay. And I just kind of sat there. I still sat in the dugout laughing because it was just, it was a crazy dumb play. It worked. And then when I knew that I could actually, I wasn't scared to do it in the game. I was never scared to do it in the game because I didn't think I could pull it off. I was scared to do it in the game because I felt like they were gonna think I was hot dogging and I was trying to do too much. Right. 
But situations that came up like that where that was literally the only play, I actually pulled that out like four or five different times and people like thought it was awesome. Well, and it happened instinctively because you were doing things like the crazy fungo swings and during yeah. BP and tracking those balls like crazy. So you had, even though it had only happened in a game a handful of times, you had probably done that hundreds, hundreds of, of times. times. Yeah, so the repetition was there and like you said, instinctively, naturally it just took over. Um, but when it was all said and done and it was over, I just kind of just laughed and I just said, oh man, I said, I'm gonna hear about this one. <laughs> The cool thing is it was all positive. So yeah. it was never, I never got anything like you're showing up, blah, blah, blah. They've literally said to me at times, we're like, man, they're like, if you got to make that play that way, go make it. Right. Because it's the same thing if I'm like a third baseman, right? And I'm coming up and I'm picking up a ball barehanded and throwing it right-handed. The reality is I throw with both hands. So right. I'm not just doing it to do it. I'm actually doing it because I can do it. Right. You know what I mean? Well, awesome stuff as yeah. usual. Uh, I hope you guys like these infield drills and infield tips uh, from a former major league infielder. Obviously, uh, he knows what he's talking about, so take his advice. If you guys want to see some more videos about infield with us, let us know in the comments below. Drop down there, let us know what you want to see. Next, check out uh, Fernando at Fernando Cortez Baseball on Instagram, YouTube, all over uh, the internet. And if you're in the SoCal area, come check him out here in his facility. And uh, we hope to see you guys in the next video. We shot a bunch of videos today, so I'm sure you'll be seeing a bunch more of us. So thanks, man. Thanks.